Hi everyone, welcome to another video. I'm Sayaka and I'm a ballet dancer and currently student at Harvard as well. So today we'll be talking about how to balance ballet and academics simultaneously because I know some of you struggle with that and because I remember when I was starting out how difficult it was for me and I needed proper guidance and like nobody was there. And so I was on the struggle bus for a long time. But over the past few years during my undergrad, I've found some ways that have helped me. So I'll be sharing some of those tips with you today so that you can get through this calmly and avoid going entirely crazy. So without further talk, let's dive right in. are watching, maybe you're a student aspiring to become a professional dancer, or you are already a dancer who is looking for career enhancement, right? So whatever the situation is, let's just begin by saying it's not an easy thing to do. And so there's no wonder why not so many people do both, right? And so if you're struggling, don't beat yourself up. Because logically speaking, Ballet requires so much energy and time and it also requires you to literally like pour your heart in, right? Like nobody goes into ballet because it's easy. They go into ballet because of passion, right? Because they're passionate about the art and passion is wonderful, but it's also exhausting. <laughs> You're constantly on dopamine, like you're high all the time. And so you're actually doing something that's both physically, mentally, and also spiritually demanding. And that's very different from like a nine to five job, right? And so of course, by the end of the day, then you're exhausted to do anything else, like let alone dance. And I think part of the reason what makes it so difficult is that in most cases, if you're pursuing academics and ballet, those are two completely separate institutions that have absolutely no relations to each other. Unless you're like in a dance major in like a college program or something, that's going to be really hard. And so like when you're part of like two different institutions, you have this dichotomy of like two separate worlds within you, right? Like school doesn't care whether you're busy with dance and your ballet company or school also doesn't really care whether you study in your free time or not, right? Like, they're not gonna cut you any slack just because you had a performance last night or just because it's like finals week. So it's not like they're coordinating the schedules with each other and that's the reason why it's so important to take care of yourself and to avoid stress, anxiety, and burnout because nobody will take care of you. So what can we do about it? Here's my first tip. Number one, create realistic time schedules. This is where most people make the mistake because they want to cram everything in. And the more ambitious you are, the more likely you want to do that, right? I know how it feels because I've been there. Uh, but when you have such a tight schedule and you're not really considering the possibilities that you might get ill or the internet may stop, right? You're putting yourself up for an unrealistic and unattainable schedule that would make you stressed because you're always gonna be behind. So it's important to consider the risks of when things aren't gonna go well. So how do we do that? Well, one of the ways that you could do that is to notice your energy level throughout the day. Right? So like, are you a morning person? Are you a night person? Like, when do you feel the most tired? So for example, I concentrate much better in the evenings. So that's when I'll like schedule my lectures, right? I'm not going to try to force myself into waking up super early. So listen to your body and observe your overall patterns and just do what works for you. Number two strategically plan your courses. If you have the abilities to choose your own courses, then you're blessed. So just take advantage of that, right? So think about course intensity, okay? Some courses are really time consuming, like computer science, you know, accounting really took a lot of time for me. And maybe others are much more easygoing. And I'm not like 
like saying ditch all the hard ones, but I'm just saying like structure your course plan so that you have a maximum of like one intense course and then the rest will be just like chill. So like if I'm taking four courses at the same time, I like to do what I call the three plus one structure. So that means I'll take one demanding course, which is usually economics for me, and then I'll combine it with three other courses that are much more enjoyable. So that could be acting, like public speaking, communication skills, like creative writing, right? All of these courses where you can be a little bit more free and also creative, you know? So that way you get the credits, but you can also manage your stress levels. So win-win. Number three, study in advance. I know this sounds so cringy, but trust me, it works every time. So if you are having a holiday before the semester, take that time to literally learn about those subjects in advance. You don't have to know everything, but just to know a little bit in advance before you get yourself into it helps so much. So you could read your textbook before semesters. Uh, what I like to do is to go on YouTube, watch some videos, go to different websites like Coursera, edX.org, and just to enroll in a free course so that you're already doing a little bit of learning in advance because that goes a long way. Like you're gonna go into the semester and things will be so much easier and so you're gonna be much more confident with the materials and participation grade, overall grade, everything's gonna go higher. So try it. Number four, practice speed reading. When we talk about balancing ballet and academics, a big part of it is time limitations, right? And so the best way you could save time is to just read fast. And so go on Google, there are so many websites about speed reading and enroll yourself in that program. I can also make a separate video if you want, but this is really helpful, especially if you have a lot of reading assignments. And I don't necessarily really like to read fast, but sometimes you have to, you know? And so, what then I'll do is I'll speed read and sometimes I'll even just like read the conclusion and then if I have time I'll go back and actually enjoy the literature. I just thought about like making a video about like tips and tricks of getting like A's without really studying. Let me know in the comments if that's something you would be interested in. <laughs> okay, anyways, number five, organize your schedules. Once your semester starts, it's a marathon and you have to be organized. So this is such an obvious tip, but you have to have a to-do list because if you keep everything up here, you will get lost, right? So write everything down, whether you're, it's like handwritten or on your phone. I usually like to use Google Tasks because I can actually edit from anywhere and anytime I want. So I'll show you. What I recommend you doing is to write down the assignment, the deadlines, the details, and also notice here that I even have the weight of the grade written down as well. And this is really helpful because like then I know immediately like how important or unimportant that like assignment is, right? And I'm saying this because I see too many people spending so much time and energy on ungraded assignments. Like, don't do that. <laughs> Anyways, what I also like about Google Tasks is that you can actually integrate it also with your Google Calendar so that everything is on one platform. And if you see here, I've also color-coded all of my events so for instance, orange is always independent studies, light blue is always ballet stuff, pink is always meeting related things, blue is just the default for whatever that's on like the Google tasks, gray is usually free time or like break or like days off. And then like of course the red is like lecture stuff. Also notice here, I even put in my relaxing time. So during my semester, that's what I'll do because otherwise, you see all of this free time and you're like, ooh, like let me fill that up with something else, right? No, 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 no. 
You need this time for yourself. So yeah, go ahead and schedule a relaxing time because you'll definitely need it. Number six, quit perfectionism. Honestly, this is something I struggle with myself, but it's really important not to take yourself too seriously because perfectionism isn't about motivation or success. It's about fear of failure, right? So what's driving us is fear and not motivation. That's a big difference. So sometimes we have such high expectations of ourselves and we want to do everything that's possible. But we have to realize that you also need to compromise. You can't be an expert on everything. So forgive yourself if you're getting a B instead of an A on something. Like I said earlier, don't try to get everything. Don't feel bad if you haven't read the entire textbook. Just read the important parts and get the overall concepts. And once you get it, stop full stop because you have other things to do right it's also scientifically proven that perfectionism makes you constantly anxious and it also decreases your performance level so try to avoid it as much as possible number seven prioritize and learn to say no when i got into harvard the first professor that i had told me this she was like harvard is going to be so hard on you you're gonna get so much work, so be prepared. But the reason why we give you so much work is so that you can prioritize what's important in your life and what's not, right? Like who is worth your time and who is not? Because you're gonna have to be selective. So I would say just focus on the people or the events that really matter, you know? And say no to anything that's not worth your time, that's not aligned with your values. Don't be a people's pleaser, don't be a doormat, value your own time and other people will respect you as well. Like, and if they don't, bye bye. This is just basic self-respect. Number eight, manage stress. Don't forget to rest. Like I said earlier, schedule a resting time if you need. Practice mindfulness, practice meditation, take yourself out for a walk cook yourself a proper dinner don't be like me i sometimes eat like cereal for dinner just because i'm so busy like don't do that take care of yourself you know like put on some jazz music like put on some candles like try to relax and enjoy the journey you know and of course if you have holidays by all means go and enjoy it like you deserve it workaholic is just another sign of weakness and it's also a sign of fear of failure just like perfectionism so give yourself permission to go on vacation i give you permission to go on vacation <laughs> okay that's it guys i know this video is going to be relatively long but i really wanted to deliver quality content instead of just throwing out a, another video with only like the obvious stuff because I remember when I was starting out it was really difficult and I needed tips so I hope you found this video helpful let me know if you have any other video suggestions let me know down in the comments below and you can also visit me on Instagram come and say hi I try to be responsive as possible so yeah thanks for watching and I'll see you next time bye, -bye.